We're here to tell us about that gift and the upcoming <laughs> second season of Being Mary Jane is actor Richard Brooks. Welcome to Rise 360. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you me. so much for being here. Oh. Yeah. Can That's you imagine? Hey, yeah. I fall in life and get up, right? <laughs> yeah, right. You would like, never give that type of gift in real life, would I know. You? Well, talk to us about your character. Um, you play Patrick. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you would maybe, yeah, no, she you would not. Yeah, yeah, if she's home alone, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about your character, Patrick. He's uh, Gabrielle Union's main character's troubled older brother. Tell us more. And for viewers who don't watch the show, because Shannon and I are huge fans, mm -hmm. but tell us more about your character. Yeah, well, Patrick is, uh, yeah, he's the, the older sibling, you know, uh, uh, Mary Jane's older brother. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of recovering from uh, my past, pretty much, you know, the character. Definitely with some addictions and things like that. And now um, just trying to become the man that I always wanted to be. You mm -hmm. know, the character's really uh, investing in himself. And I think it's a, you know, a storyline that um, a lot of men, I think, can identify with because, you know, a lot of us are trying to rebuild ourselves, definitely, you know, even with the recessions and things like that. I mean, he had big plans, used to be on top, and now he's on the bottom trying to get back up. You, yeah. know? Mm -hmm. you yeah. mentioned he's a recovering addict. What kind of research went into this character to become an addict? Uh, well, you know, when I, when I uh, you know, an addict, to me, uh, an addiction is something that, that is just a part of you and it's always a daily struggle. So I just try to um, move back keep, the, house, keep the character present, you know, keep them out. I just feel like basically it's, it's just always a choice. You know, I feel like the thing with, with, with addiction and basically when you're trying to build days and, and time of not, you know, using or abusing, you know, it's just really every day. So I kind of, you know, I spoke with people. I read up a little bit on it and uh, I just sort of tried to just invest in the character and basically in his, in his future as opposed to his past more, you know. Now this show has been a huge hit on BET. It always trends on Twitter every night yeah, it airs. I know crazy, Shannon yeah. and I live tweet the show. Oh, Why do you uh, think it's been such a huge hit? I think, you know, I think it's, it's just a, uh, it's a show whose time has come. I think it's, um, it's kind of incredible what BET's doing. I mean, as far as on the quality level and, and, uh, and, just, and just raising the bar with, with all their programming right now. And so I think it's just a new day uh, and, it's, and it's a very relatable story. I think it's, it's kind of unlike pretty much anything else I've seen on television, mm -hmm. where the characters are just really dealing with struggles that we all can totally relate to, and that is the drama. And basically, the drama may be the decision that you make as opposed to, like, gun battles or things like that. It's really a human story, family... Uh, and Gabrielle is amazing. You know, her storyline is just incredible. And so, yes, yeah. the family is not the Huxable yeah. family no, at no. all. <laughs> well, yeah, in, in yeah, the 21st century Huxables. Yeah. Right, right, right. You yeah. mentioned Gabrielle Union. She's amazing in her role. What is it like to work with her? I mean, you know, I, I always feel like I'm just like, you know, fluffing her up because I just love working with her so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just so fun and so real and such a trooper, you know, because she's truly carrying us and, and, uh, and working really hard and, and just doing amazing work. So. She brings it out of me. I love. I just love the way she is. I love her her frankness and her realness, and uh, you know. And Richard Roundtree plays your dad. Yeah, man. Shaft oh man. Is your dad. Oh yeah, Shaft right. I wanted to dad. be Shaft. Yeah, I wanted to be Shaft too when I was a kid. You know. Well, what's it like to have Shaft as your fictionary father? <laughs> I mean, you know, he's just like he's one of the coolest men you know I've ever met. Actually, I mean, he's just very. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a major star. He's always been a major star, mm -hmm. an icon, and uh, but he's just very relatable, very cool. Still sexy, you know, and uh, I just, I just, and, and a friend, you know, he definitely gives us advice and, and he just hangs with us and it's just, it's, it's crazy, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the whole cast is amazing, you know, I love all the actors and uh, the writing, it's just, it's, it's too much, it's too good, I'm too blessed on it. Well, do you think that the show is actually changing people's perception on black TV dramas and how is it doing that? Well, I don't know, you know, I mean, all, I think all we really wanted to do was just make a story that, that, comes from our point of view, from our perspective, but is, is universal, that just shows uh, how, how our lives reflect humanity the same way other dramas have, you know, that are not, you know, with African-American primary cast and stuff like that. And just, and I think it's real relatable. And, and the response has not just been that, you know, African-Americans or black people love the show. I mean, there's definitely, you know, there's, oh, everybody loves it. When I go out, I mean, everyone from all races, everybody, and, and women in general, you know. So, and men too. I mean, I've heard stories now where uh, wives are thanking me. They're coming up to me saying, oh, thank you for creating this show because now my husband will sit with me and watch a show. Your show is the only <laughs> show that he'll watch with me and we can sit and have, you know, an hour of television together. So That says a lot. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. You know, and then the husband is right there saying, yeah, you know, like, you know what I mean? So it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a phenomenal success and uh, I, I just think that the writing and the vision of... Uh, 
Mara and Salim is just is just taking us to out of this world, really mm -hmm. places. Yeah. And now in the last episode, your character had relapsed. Oh, yeah. and confessed yeah. to his father that he had indeed relapsed. So what can we expect from the coming season? Well, you know, I mean, I think that's, again, that's the thing. It's, um, it's going to continue to be a, a trial, you know, and an effort to, to, to stay clean and, um, and also to, to just start over. You know, I think, I think you'll, you'll see um, Patrick still trying to, trying to be that man, trying to be that father, you know, yeah. trying to be... Uh, to, to undo some of the wrong he's done and, 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 and try to build a better future for his family and stuff like that and just, and just, and just work and be a good man. Is Mary yeah. Jane finally going to find love? With someone who's not married? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Good well, question. You know, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I know we have to stay tuned. Yeah. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little secret. No yeah, one's watching. Yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Know, right? yeah. All right, well, yeah. since you can't tell us about that, then let's talk about Law and Order. I mean, mm. you're probably best known for playing the assistant district attorney, Paul Robinetti. Yeah. What was it yeah. like to play in such an iconic show? Yeah. That was that 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 whole uh, story and the fact that it's gone for oh, many, these many years and has so many spinoffs and been such a great success was uh, it was amazing. I mean, when I when I first saw the script, I knew it was a great story and uh, and and Dick Wolf. At the time, uh, our dramas were kind of out of fashion when we started in, in, in early '90s, and um, the Untouchables had just come, and so there was this whole thrust of the government. And, and the good guys, per se, being the underdogs. You know, there was this whole kind of flip. And so uh, all the actors, we came to it with, with a lot of energy. We were all, like, pretty much film actors and, and kind of snobs, you know, with, and, 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 and men with a lot of testosterone there. And so I think that fed into the show. The writing was incredible. And um, every concept, you know, from the handheld sh shooting yes. or to, you know, half, half, law, you know, half law, half order, mm -hmm. And uh, originally, I mean, it was so flexible that we could have even split it up into half-hour shows, which was really... We never had to do that because the mm -hmm. hour actually succeeded. But at the time, you know, it was the Cosby time and, and the half-hour was really strong. So it was a drama that actually could have had the law one day and hour, you know, and then we had a swing episode, you know, for the, to the next week. But um, it just took off. It took, it took off. It's, it's been amazing, yeah. And, and it was great to be that kind of a guy, you know, mm -hmm. to be that kind of a man. I mean, for me personally, as an African-American guy, it was cool to be... Uh, a part of the system and strong and positive and, you know, intelligent and all those kind of things. You know? What's it like for you to look back on old episodes? Because they're on all the time. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, I just, I mean, it just keeps me motivated. I want to, you know, I want to stay looking sharp like, he, you know, like Robinette was. You he know was I mean? sharp. His high top yeah, fade was sharp. always crisp. Yeah, was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it could have been sharper sometimes, but... <laughs> but, no, nah, no, nah, it was, it's a... Uh, it's, I mean, I don't look back at it that often, actually, but it is always on, and so it's kind of amazing, yeah. Mm. Now, you also recently played Frederick Douglass in the PBS series oh, The Abolitionist. Yeah. What was it like to play that, uh, play him, well, and what was your approach to the character? Well, I mean, that, that is one of, uh, uh, I don't know, that part, that role, just kind of blew my mind. I had no idea at the time before I started working on how powerful Frederick Douglass was mm -hmm. and what, uh, I mean, now he's my biggest hero, actually, mm -hmm. literally. He... What he did is something that I don't think... We know him as an icon, but no one really knows how he really came up from slavery, you know, the fights that he had to, to, to maintain his manhood uh, when he was a young boy and how he, he actually beat down his own overseer, you know, who was there to be a slave breaker and, and to the point where the guy couldn't even tell anybody that he had been beaten by a slave because it would have destroyed his whole business and his whole reputation of breaking slaves, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And uh, that he had taught himself to read, he escaped, I mean, he was an orator and uh, a world traveler and, and, you know, ambassador. I mean, he was just, uh, I, I mean, I love him so much. I can't, I want to find some other way to express him. I feel like his story hasn't been told. I feel like, you know, we have Malcolm, we have Martin and things like this, but the way he was a man in that time of mm -hmm. slavery and the way, uh, the thrust of this piece, which was so incredible to me, was as of, of being heroes, you know, you never get a really a heroic journey pretty much mm -hmm. in slave stories and things like that. You don't really see a man overcoming his, his obstacles and basically defeating uh, an impossible situation. I mean, I, you know, we try to read history and I think the one thing I don't really like about most stories is that it's really hard to get the idea of how entrenched slavery was in our mm -hmm. society. You know, it's really impossible to realize the same way we have freedom right now, we didn't have freedom. And, mm -hmm. and it was going to be, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. 
and him and a small group of people. And, and also, I, I like what I loved about it, too, was just seeing how uh, technology, you know, like what we're doing right here and different shows, how at that time the printing press and the railroad systems and the mail systems and all these things were able to, and, and even theater, you know, and uh, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Actually, we know about the book, but we don't really realize that actually the play, yeah. when it became a touring play, mm -hmm. the audiences in the North, when they saw this and they saw the plight, actually, you know, it changed their perspective and it made, it started to initiate the Civil War and, and the change of, of breaking down slavery. And, mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, and he also, he lived to be a great old man and, and, you know, he stayed married all his life and when his wife passed, you know, he was able to marry, a, a, you know, another younger, you know, younger woman out of his race and, I mean, he was just too cool, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. too cool. Yeah, so I, right. my approach to him, anyway, I'm sorry I didn't get into your story. I can talk no. about Frederick Douglass. <laughs> we could listen. Yeah, yeah. But, you seem so passionate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really, yeah, my approach really was, was just to try to humanize him mm -hmm. and uh, to, to, he didn't, we didn't really hear his voice, mm -hmm. but when I first read the material and it's written, you know, like his books are written from his speeches pretty much and from his own voice. And so once I heard his voice, mm -hmm. I was really excited because then I realized that here was the man, his, his voice was right here in these words, the way he wrote it, the way he spoke because he was such a great orator, you know, even, and uh, it just, yeah, it just, it's just really exciting. Yeah, it was a really exciting part. Yeah. All right. Now, really quickly, what's next for you? Uh, we hear that you sing as well. You're an R&B singer? Uh, yeah, I do have some tracks. Yeah, oh, and I got right. some music that I've been putting yeah. out. Yeah, I got a couple okay. videos out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm working on a new album. So, uh, really? And also, I'm actually working on a live show that I want to put together. I'm thinking about doing something down at uh, maybe 54 Below and stuff like that, you know, and put together a nice kind of... Scale back R and B okay. soul, little Barry White. You know, uh, would you like to sing us the break? Then we need to hear a sampling. <laughs> oh shoot! What you want? Uh, um, Anything you got? Mary had a little lamb. My <laughs> darling, I mm -mm, can't get enough for your love, baby. Uh. Oh, I don't know, I don't know why. I can't get enough for your love, baby. <laughs> you know, something like that. All right. All right. That was nice. like, yeah, a little something like that. All right, like that. well, we've got a microphone, so you got to come all right. back. Yeah, for the album all right. Drops, yeah, all right. All right. I would love to. That'd be hot. <laughs> all, yeah, right. all right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. All right. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.